Love Chance 2021. Sit down and please close your eyes. Listen to my voice. I'm going to take you on a journey. It's Monday morning. The sun is coming in through the window. It touches your face and your haptic feedback wristband is telling you that it's the ideal moment to wake up. It's also telling you that in a few minutes, you will go to a big company event. It's the global sales kickoff. And at this global sales kickoff, you're going to do a keynote. So you jump out of bed, you put on a shirt, you leave your pants because you're more comfortable without it, and you hop over to your computer. You log in, and there you are, a virtual avatar, your best self. You walk onto the stage, and you say to the people there, please, sit down and close your eyes. Welcome today. Welcome here. <laughs> My name is Aragorn. Yes, like in Lord of the Rings, I've heard it many times. My name is Aragorn, and I am with your open metaverse, a beam-up project. I'm not going to talk to you guys about blockchain a lot, or about its amazing possibilities and potential, or you know what we are going to do with it, because I know that all of you already know how that works. But what I want to talk to you about is our future. The metaverse, our virtual self, it's amazing, right? If we could live 50% of our lives online, do everything there, everything that you could do in real life, perhaps even more. Wait, everything you can do in real life online? Why? Why? Why would I want to do that? Perhaps this was a mistake, Alex. Perhaps we should go home. This is, this is nonsense. Who would want to live online if you can have the real thing? I mean, currywurst. It's amazing, but virtually it doesn't really have the same kind of taste, does it? And yet, the facts are undeniable. I want to show you guys a little video. But before I do that, I have one question. Who thinks the metaverse is the future? Please raise your hand. That's less than 50% of this room. Who here thinks that the metaverse is nonsense, it's just a trend to hype, and nobody's ever going to live their lives online in a virtual space? Please raise your hands. Don't be afraid. Absolutely nobody? Nobody. Wow, I'm really surprised. I didn't count on that one. There have been other technological advancements, and here's a little video of 1998, and it's about something called the mobile phone. It's in Dutch, but I'll do my best to translate. Hello. Hello. Heeft u een mobiele telefoon? You have a mobile phone. Waarom niet? Nou, dat heb ik niet nodig. Nou, I don't have one. That's ik word toch niet uh, gebeld of zo. Heeft u een mobiele really telefoon? Me. Nee, hoor, heb ik niet. I Waarom don't have a phone. My phone. Absolutely no, not. Why would I need one? Je ziet er het nut niet van. Absoluut niet. No, I'm not that important. Vindt u het belangrijk om altijd bereikbaar te zijn? Ook niet. Ik ben niet zo belangrijk. Dan ben je op de fiets en dan word je Imagine gebeld. you're on your bicycle and they suddenly call you on your phone. Ik heb gewoon telefoon, waarom moet ik een mobiel hebben? That's so crazy. Dat is handig. Ja, this is my favorite klopt, one. Dat is handig. He says that's really handy. Maar als ik ergens strand, dan is er ook altijd ergens wel een telefoon zelf, een boerderij. Met een... It's really handy, but if I would be stranded somewhere, there's always a telephone cell or a farm nearby where I can go and make a phone call. The truth is that Back in 1998, they were a lot dumber than you guys are today. Because when new tech came around, they thought they didn't really need it. That we would never do anything like that. That it was just nonsense. Well, fortunately, I have you guys today, but many of the places we come, people ask us, but Aragorn, the metaverse, why, why, why would we want to go into the metaverse? And then we tell them, well, that's the wrong question. The metaverse is already here. 2011, Minecraft. A game launched and it's played by 128 million people today. 54% of boys aged 3 to 12 play Minecraft. That's another generation of consumers, another generation of artists, another generation of creators. 
Not just watch. Oh, no. no. You, you are so right. There are also a lot of women playing it. Absolutely. But boys are just a little bit more addicted to games at this point than women. Perhaps they're just not that intelligent. Star Citizen was launched as a massive project in 2012. It would make the space available to everybody that couldn't afford a flight with Blue Origin or SpaceX. Three million customers bought into it, kickstarting it, spending over 350 million US dollars on spacecraft that don't even really exist. They're virtual. And in 2006, Roblox was launched, and today, 50% of kids under 16 in the US play Roblox. Does anybody here know what Roblox is? Please, go ahead, you here. At the front, tell me, what is Roblox? I don't know so much about it, but I mean it's an open space. You can create a character, you can just like meet your friends and just maybe use a small house. Or maybe, I, I, don't, I think the Adidas is yeah. today. Did you guys hear that? You can build a house, meet your friends, you go to the Adidas store and you can buy swag. That's Roblox. And 50% of kids in the US are doing this, including the girls. They don't, they don't know what they wear though. It's and then there's Pokemon Go. Who here has played Pokemon Go? Anybody? Christian, so good to see you again. You play Pokemon Go? Yes, sure. Did you do any Pokemon today? No, not today. Not today, unfortunate. Cool. You, you, sorry, what? You got a relaxo. Wow, that's amazing. That's so cool. Pokemon Go is not just a game. It's an integration of the virtual world with the real world, where we go out, and we look at stuff that's not really there, but it exists in a different space. All of this is the metaverse. The only problem is they're all islands. All of these experiences are still games with no real purpose, and they're not connected. Because up until this point, we thought, well, this is just for fun, right? There's no real use in it. And then February 2020, you guys know what happened? A global pandemic hit, and suddenly we couldn't go to work anymore. Companies like Zoom had their shares skyrocket, because suddenly we needed to find ways to connect with each other over the internet. And we did, en masse. And within a few months, images and pictures started coming online on LinkedIn of people that had Zoom fatigue. People that had headaches because they'd been on video calls all day. Stories about how people forgot to clean up their room before they got on a call with their boss and their dirty laundry was on the bed. People forgetting to put on their pants and unlike in the virtual world where your avatar looks perfect, they forgot that they were in front of a camera. And so we started to realize slowly but surely that perhaps this was not just games. Something else had to come. But where or how? I'll skip over this. I already kind of forgot about that. And Metaverse is coming for you, but who would trust Meta with their virtual life? If half your life is online, it's part of who you are, wouldn't you want to own that yourself? Who here would trust formerly Facebook, the, the artist formerly known as Facebook? Meta, with their virtual life. Please, raise your hand if you would do that. If you would just give it to them. It's not a lot of hands. And I agree. It's a big risk. We know for a fact that they have done stuff with our lives, with our data, with our personalities, with our privacy, that we would have never condoned if we'd known. But now we know better. And we have a way to change all that. I introduce to you your open metaverse. A place, a platform, where everybody can be anything they want to be. Brands can co-create with their audience. DJs can have concerts together with their fans. Any place they want on the moon, and they won't have to play, they won't have to pay Bezos or Musk to get there. 
And that's just a start, because really we're just slapping old-fashioned ideas of what we know in the real world onto a virtual existence where none of the rules and regulations, not even gravity, applies. And we're only just getting started. What we're trying to do with the Europa Metaverse platform is that we want to make people in control of their online profile, their online identity, while at the same time making sure that all these worlds, your, your, your business, your company, your, your, your team meetings, as well as your, your games or the concerts you go to, the art you're going to see if you're going to Yves. Are you here, Yves? There you are. If you're going to see one of his art contests, where artists battle each other for NFT art, all of that. It's not just available, but you have to go to different websites and make different profiles and get different swag and pay everywhere for getting that cool shirt or that super skin. No, on your open metaverse, it will all be seamlessly connected. Because your profile will be inside of a blockchain. It will be available. And you can go seamlessly, like you're teleporting, from one world to the next. It's almost like magic. I'm 55 seconds over time. I'm sorry, guys. I, I got carried away again. Your open metaverse. If you want to claim your jacket with your NFT token, get your phones out and scan this QR code. I'll meet you in the metaverse. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.